Okay, this is the Roman piece number. I think it's our second Roman piece. <clears throat> Lost track. Ah, this is piece number 40, Alexander Mosaic from the House of Fawn, Pompeii. The context of this piece is that it is a probably a recreation of a Greek painting, um, probably by a guy named Phloxenes. And there have been no Greek paintings survive, but we think that just like the Niobe's crater, other forms of art borrowed from Greek paintings, and this mosaic might be that. More context here, it was a floor mosaic. Now, this does not look like a floor mosaic. This does, made of 1.5 uh, million tiles. So this is something that a person had on their floor in Pompeii, which would definitely mean that the person was super wealthy to do this. It also demonstrates the Roman use of Greek art. The Romans were not artists per se, they were more engineers in terms of what they invested in. And so when they conquered Greece, they borrowed from the Greeks their art. Um, in terms of form, like I said, 1.5 million tiles. Tiles would be uh, kind of chunks of glass, um, ceramic pieces, pieces of stone that would be embedded in like a concrete base. And um, this one has been taken up off the floor and put into this museum on the wall. It's um, 16 feet wide, eight feet high. We see in terms of form, a use of line, the spears that the soldiers have are really mostly going one direction. In this case right here, we see three spears that have turned around, headed the other direction, but um, it's like a moment uh, in battle has been captured and we see that with this use of line. We also see the use of this tree, the greatest tree branch here is going in this direction and we see some branches heading off here, but it's my first time really noticing that tree. Other form, although a lot of it, the chunks are missing, we see Alexander the Great here, and he would have been surrounded by his Macedonian soldiers. Um, but Alexander the Great takes up only a fourth of this mosaic. Three-fourths of the mosaic is filled in with Persians led here by Darius the Third. Notice also in form that um, we have this hierarchical scale his, in all of our art forms up until this point. And in this art piece, here's Alexander the Great's head, and Darius the Third is much higher than Alexander the Great. So, some incredible artistry going uh, on with Darius the Third being so much taller. So, a little more up close here at the tile, more form. Foreshortening is a term you need to know. Foreshortening is when we take an object, a person, an animal, and the artist portrays part of that object, person, animal, and then we as um, observers fill in the rest. So the artist has got the rump of the horse here and then the head of the horse turning and wildly, and we fill in that, um, that gap, and the artist helps us with that. The foreshortening of this horse is also interesting because the horse is in the middle of trying to be turned around. So it's a real wild moment for that horse. Uh, so complicated artistry going on. And then also in terms of form, we see um, contrast between light and dark, a lot of contrast. And I know there's glass covering this tile, so it makes it hard to see that. But let me go back to this piece here. You can see some dark areas. And then obviously, look at the rump of the horse, some light areas. So great contrast because there were so many pieces of tile being used. The artist could contrast the different colors. Um, okay, function. Uh, two functions. One, just in the piece itself, it answers the question of how did Alexander the Great overcome this Persian empire 
to create his own empire here in red. How did he do that? The Persian Empire was a mighty empire. And then just having this mosaic in your home, the function of it would have been to show wealth and to identify with a great military hero. So in terms of function, we answer the question of how Alexander the Great defeated Darius III. Darius III was super confident that this was going to be a no problem battle. He even brought a very pregnant wife with him to the battle site. And she was later taken captive and treated well, story says, by Alexander the Great. But um, it, you see here Darius III's eyes are quite large. He's, he's like being caught wondering what's going on. His arm is reaching out to one of his guards who's right here on this horse and is fallen. And um, we see that the answer to the question is that Alexander the Great caught Darius and his soldiers by surprise. Um, let's look at the function or content here more closely. Interestingly, um, Darius... I already mentioned in fear reaching out and also notice here that this chariot wheel is really the center of the entire mosaic, interestingly. And um, underneath the wheel of that chariot is a soldier who is lying on the ground and he's got his shield up in front of him. Let's look closely here. And he is at a moment of death where the chariot wheel is going to crush him. But his back is to us. His face is being projected in this shield so that we can see him at the kind of the moment before he dies. Amazing. More content in this piece is Alexander the Great, who's got just this look of strength moving forward, undeterred. And um, he has his a shield. Um, a spear in his hand that he is spearing a Persian soldier with. Um, look at the Gorgon on his breastplate. The eyes of the Gorgon are facing the same direction as Alexander the Great's. So they're turning toward the enemy. And then his, his horse, this is actually a statue of Alexander the Great and his horse, Bucephalus, in Scotland, uh, not that Alexander the Great went to Scotland, but the Scottish people love, I think, this relationship between Alexander the Great and his horse. And his horse is just straightforward, too, just like Alexander the Great. So you can see that here. Um, this is Alexander the Great, Bucephalus. Um, and this is a spear going through this uh, Persian soldier. And one art historian says that there's a flow of action that we see going on in this direction and a flow going here. And the, the flow here would be Alexander the Great spearing this man, the horse who is being turned around foreshortened, and then the man who is looking into the um, shield. And then in this direction, we see the man turning the horse around, Darius the Third, reaching his arm out for his fallen guard and then the charioteer who is who is really one of the few people who is facing the other direction turning everybody around so it's a we're caught up in this art piece in the moment where alexander the great is pushing back on this great army of darius the third it's quite the capturing of a moment <laughs> 